Mike, can you tell us what you're dealing with at selection? What's the health of the squad like? Anyone concerning you at the moment? No, health is good so far. We um, obviously coming off the back of a pretty strong win, so it's um, yeah, it's a good spot to be in. Any thought of changing it up? The needs at Gold Coast or um, players needing a break or anything like that? No, the, we'll look at a potential change. Justine Mills didn't play last week, um, but that'll be released later tonight. They've had the um, the win. What's their appetite for the second win now? Huge, yeah. I think, as I spoke about post-game on Saturday, it's um, it's very much, we see that as a platform now, that win. It's um, it's not the pinnacle, it's certainly the platform, so we look to build from there. What does that do from a, a belief point of view? <laughs> you, had, you had some close losses, but to actually get those four points, how does that help the belief of the squad? Yeah, I think like four points is one thing, but the way that you go about your footy is another. And when you talk about belief, uh, I think the way that we performed defensively and offensively uh, last weekend is is the platform for where we want to be. In the most respectful way to the Swans possible, was the margin a result of more of them or, or you being at your <laughs> absolute best? Oh, it's difficult for me to comment on how other teams and where they're at. I think for, from our perspective, um, certainly really pleased with the result and most importantly, it's reward for effort for our group. Um, you know, I keep talking about how short a build up it's been, but to for the, for the group to see as young as they are, to see what they're capable of at AFLW level has been a really important piece, so we'll look to build on it. What can you put up on a whiteboard from that game and say this is why we scored so well? Uh, yeah, I think my language for a long time has now been stick to the plan, and so we're obviously um, have certain elements of the game that we, we have to look after, and our group largely for four quarters stuck to the plan and so I was able to show quite a lot of that <laughs> in a really positive way early in the week. Speaking of plans, it's, this is the halfway mark from yeah. the season. Do you have a plan for where this leads to or is it still week by week? Um, I think it's just like I said, you, you've got to keep building on the platform that we put down, you know, not just in the win last weekend but certainly in those f the first three weeks where we weren't able to get the result we were after but we certainly built every week and you know I think I've spoken to everyone here every Friday around the growth of, of each week so I think we've just built on that and, and we'll look to do that again this week. So you're not setting a target or? I'll, I, as I've always said we, we want to be highly competitive in every game we play and now the young group seeing what we're capable of particularly offensively um, we'll look to keep keep getting better at that and you know hopefully impact the scoreboard as we did last weekend. A month ago, would have seen a luxury to say Phillips goes forward and mm. the midfield. That just seemed the perfect fit. Yeah, Erin's doing really well forward, and um, I think just shows her class there. And it also has provided that opportunity. As much as you know, Gemma goes out of the team, and people look sideways and go, "What's going to happen next?" You know, we have real versatility in our team, and that's another thing I'm really proud of um, in our list. And to see Hannah Ewings and Abby Dowrick step forward with more midfield minutes and Erin really control that forward line has been nice little growth for us over the last couple of weeks. Going to keep her there for longer than you plan? Um, I think, again, like what's a really key part of our team is versatility. And so it, while it looks the way that it does and works in the way that it does, we, we'll keep moving forward. Bit of insider trading this week. You've got a fair few former sons on the list. <laughs> Can you lean on them at all? Uh, yeah, I think to an extent you can gain insight, but I also think even with the tight turnaround from season to season, every team you'll see grows and develops and changes, and even with the list that the Suns have, there's been a few movements there um, since last season. So, yeah, there's, there's a little bit there, but I think you also just approach it like you would any other game. What's it like the girls? Any of them have, do any of them have, like, I don't know how they all exited individually, but mm. like points to prove or just mates that they want to better up there, <laughs> like, is there any extra dynamics for the six of them, I think? Oh, look, I think, really, um, coming from a position that I was in where I played, obviously, for Carlton and then for Brisbane and you end up playing against your old mates or, or otherwise, um, yeah, you just have to approach every game consistently and I know our, our group will do that. Um, you know, sometimes I found personally that one of the most fun parts of W is playing against your mates, so I'm sure our girls will go in with a similar attitude. Another thing, what do you reckon you've embedded into your game that <laughs> now has every team looking at that? That's what Port Adelaide is. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like a broken record now and I'm, I'm very happy to keep doing it. The contested part of our game is something we're really proud of. We're still the number one tackling team in the comp and 
you know, we, we could be teams who number one tackling team, you might assume they don't win their fair share of the footy, but we do both. And so I think certainly the, the Port Adelaide way of being really hard to play against um, and the competitive nature that we bring in every game is, is something that is the bedrock of what we do. Have you been able to develop that brand? It felt like from first bounce against West Coast, it was like, <laughs> this is a Port Adelaide team. Yeah. Have you been able to develop that so quickly? It goes back to list management really. Naomi Maidman, who's our list manager, has done such an exceptional job of building this group and you know, it's not a random thing that we're a highly contested team. That's something that the footy club values and, and we valued in building our list. You touched on Hannah Ewings. How impressed were you with her <laughs> last week and how important was she to you? Yeah, Hannah obviously being our number one draft pick, um, you know, she's a fantastic talent at, at 18 and one thing I really like about it is she's not going to run around and tell you that. She'll just let her actions do the talking. So she'll keep getting better as well. Um, and, you know, it's, it's very early stages for Hannah and it's really pleasing that she's been able to perform in the way that she has. Did you talk to some of your defenders got some credit? <laughs> Defensive group have been fantastic. Um, and Hamish Hartlett, our backline coach, has been exceptional with them. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny, when you, particularly when you score in the way that we did last week, um, I think we were 75% time in front half. And so it's difficult for the defenders and the backline group to get the acknowledgement that they deserve because a lot of what they're doing off the ball allows us to play in that way. How important would it be to make a back-to-back win heading into a Australia? Yeah, look, I think every single game with a 10-round season is, is as important as the next. So, yeah, we're certainly pretty keen to crack in on Sunday on the Gold Coast. Just finally, uh, the Hawthorne issue at <laughs> AFL level we asked Clark about it as well. I think there's been some talk about op opening that dialogue with Indigenous players at every team, regardless of what the situation is. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something you need to Yeah, at? we've, as a footy club, we've already done that. So Chris Davies and Juliet Haslam have been in contact with every First Nations footballer in our, in our footy club and reached out really for support. Um, and just for them to know they've got the full support of the footy club in what's a difficult week, I think. And, and an, um, it's just... It's not a nice situation at all and so yeah as a footy club what we can control is supporting our group of players and, and that's what we're doing.